Hello, my name is Faisal and today we are discussing the USA to India money transfer. The traditional money transfer that you see looks something like this. You have a sender, the sender has a bank account, they transfer money from a licensed uh, entity to a bank. The sending bank receives the money, there's dollars, they send it across again through a licensed channel to a receiving bank and the receiving bank in India, which is licensed to do payouts using their license, pays out to the beneficiary in INR. So the sender utilizes a bank or a money transfer operator that is licensed. That's the key here. The money transfer operator or the, li or the bank has an agreement with a receiving bank or a receiving uh, MTO for the payout. This is again licensed and then they pay out to the beneficiary in the local currency, etc., um, in India, in INR. A lot of people are now trying to see how they can use uh, Bitcoin and bring that into the equation and try to leverage it. So let's look at that. So this is what a typical Bitcoin transfer to India looks like. And obviously this is based on a arbitrage opportunity that exists between the United States and India. Let's say in the US for argument's sake, the one BTC is $40,000. In India, it may be $42,000. So just by transporting a Bitcoin from, buying a Bitcoin from the United States, selling it in India, you gain $2,000 as it is. So this is fantastic. So a lot of money transfer operators or those wanting to do money transfer operators want to do something like this. So there's a sender. The sender sends money again to a licensed uh, entity, uh, a bank or a money transfer operator, and they have the dollars. The person or the entity that wants to do all this money transfer and take advantage of the arbitrage as well as give money in India would then, you know, uh, purchase Bitcoin from a licensed U.S. exchange. They would uh, receive the money. So let's say you're sending $10,000. They would receive $10,000 worth of Bitcoin from a licensed exchange, maybe Coinbase, Kraken, etc. And they'll put that in their wallet. And let's say uh, this is, I don't know, 0.33 of Bitcoin, right? And with the arbitrage, in order to pay out that much in India, you only need 0.3. So they would only transfer 0.3 uh, of Bitcoin over here. They would sell it at a local exchange. So Bitcoin is sent to a wallet, to a crypto exchange in India and sold for INR. And then that money is paid out locally using the uh, to the beneficiary using a local uh, bank, right? So because you've already cashed out an INR, so what you're going to do is you're simply going to transfer it to the beneficiary. So... You keep the arbitrage over here. You also have the ability to, you know, uh, uh, basically take dollars and, you know, uh, keep doing this thing. Because if you were doing this as a business to do arbitrage, the problem is you take, you, you, you may buy one Bitcoin, you may send it across, you may sell it. Now you're sitting with INR. How do you convert that INR and, you know, recycle it back? Uh, there are, you know, export limitations as to how much money you can take out. So the best and the easiest way to do it is to start a remittance business because people are constantly sending money. You give them zero fee, zero this, zero this, best rate, right? You really don't care. Why? Because the arbitrage is really where you're making money. And everyone would want to do this. And this is how, you know, a lot of the uh, entities we talk to want to do it. But there's a problem, a very serious problem if you try to do this. So a problem so serious that you could end up in jail for a minimum of five years to seven years. And what's that? Well, that's what is wrong with this scenario. So that's, I'm just going to go through one more slide and show you where the problematic points are and why you need to be absolutely super careful when dealing with something like this. So let's look at the problem. So the first thing is, does the sending money transfer operator that receives the fiat understand that crypto is being used? Have, do they have a correspondent agreement with you that a crypto is being used? Does their bank understand that crypto is being used? So this is usually the case where the answer is no. The second thing is when this entity that wants to do this whole thing uh, decides to use crypto, they've now just taken custody of funds. While the MTO and the bank may be licensed, by taking custody of funds over here in Bitcoin, you've inserted yourself into the flow of funds. So you need to be licensed. And if you are not licensed, you are breaking money transmission laws, and that's a very serious criminal uh, offense in the United States. 
when you send money across to a exchange, does the exchange know that this is an inward remittance coming in as per RBI rules, Reserve Bank of India rules? This is not allowed if the end purpose, if the intent is remittances. So, uh, and then the last thing is money paid out to the local bank using a beneficiary. So someone's bank account has to be used for doing this payout. It, usually it's a company, etc. Does that company have a RBI license to pay out locally for an inward remittance? It's not considered a Bitcoin payout. No, the intent, the intent was that person number one, the sender was sending money to the beneficiary. They don't know about the Bitcoin thing. That is where you inserted yourself. And all they know is that my beneficiary is getting money in INR. Was that approved and sanctioned by RBI? Chances are it is not. Do they have an NOC, a no objection certificate from the RBI, the Reserve Bank of India, which is the Central Bank of India? The answer is most likely no. So with these two things taken into consideration, this is a very illegal and an unlawful transaction. A proposed solution that I kept keep hearing about is, well, what if we issue the sender a wallet over here in the United States and they sort of load crypto on their own? Fine. So in this case, they're using Coinbase or something and they're loading money into their wallet in, in, in the U.S. And on the beneficiary side, we also have another wallet of the same person, the sender. And somehow we provide a technological layer to transfer from when you load dollars into your wallet in America you have the ability to transfer those dollars to a wallet in India. And from there, you know, again, you have your own account and you can sell it. Yes, that would not require a license, but it cannot be offered as a service because the minute you offer it as a service, you become an intermediary. The minute you become an intermediary, money transmission laws are broken. And if you think you can break a law in three and four, which is in India or over there, that actually, you are actually breaking a law in the United States. The U.S. says that if you offer a service to an American citizen, a resident, etc., whether you operate, offer the service within the U.S. or outside the U.S., but it originates from the U.S., we will treat you no different as if you were not in the U.S. or if you were in the U.S. You will be treated the same. If you're not in the U.S., we'll treat you as if you were in the U.S. So they will actually go after you. They will go after the bank that you work for. They will go after the institutions that are facilitating this. And you certainly don't want to be in the crosshairs of the long arm of the United States government. But anyways, I hope this is able to uh, give you a little bit of um, understanding. Again, the sending money transfer operator or the bank that's receiving fiat, do they know? Do they have a correspondent agreement with a licensed entity to accept Bitcoin. Is the entity that is going to be accepting Bitcoin license, are they inserting themselves and do they have a, a compliance program in place? Do they have a correspondent tie-up agreement with the sending MTO? Do they have a correspondent tie-up agreement with the receiving MTO? Does the receiving MTO understand that this is a remittance play, that they have an RBI exemption on this thing? Why? Because foreign exchange is not coming into India. Only the Bitcoin is coming into India and it's being sold off locally because of the local marketplaces. And the local entity that is paying out, do they have a license for the issuance of this money to the beneficiary from RBI and do they have a no objection certificate? So these are the four things. Please don't break the law. Take this into consideration. If you're trying to do this thing, you know, do it the proper way. Uh, that's all for now. Till next time, take care. Faisal Khan, signing out.